So I'm going to break down the table like this. I'm going to go level, floor height, HX, WX, WX, HX, K, CVX, FX, VX, and overturning moment. Then for levels, we just have a roof and we have ground. So our roof is 16 feet based on our uh, H sub N value. Ground is zero feet. So that means, means HX, which is our elevation, is 16 feet. And our ground is zero feet. Now that might seem repetitive, but HX is talking about your elevation uh, relative to your ground. So as you move up in stories, um, that changes. Your little WX is your floor weight. So it's broken up of the weight of your floors as you were to move up in multiple stories. Um, for us today, again, we just have the single story. Now, what you do take in engineering practice is for seismic mass, we calculated big W which we said was 128 kips. That's the total weight from the foundation up. So from this point up, that's big W. But when we split up our forces laterally for seismic, you take the portion of mass from mid-height of the story up and down. So for this case, for the ground portion, seismic mass is just contributed to foundation and then the next story up is half height of the wall plus half height of the wall above that point, above that story. So total in our case is actually going to be the full roof height because there's no additional story above. So this is your um, little WX for that story. So when we go down, and today um, I've already broken it up, so we're going to say 105 kips. For that portion, and then for the bottom half height of the wall, it's 23 kips. So when you're taking off your mass quantities, you know, when you're taking the weight of your walls, the weight of your roof, the weight of your ceiling, all of that stuff, um, you usually say, like, as for example, um, 15 pounds per square foot for, your, for all of your first story walls. Um, and if your walls are 10 feet high, that would be 15 times 10 feet high, which gives you 150 pounds per lineal foot of wall but you only need to take half the height of the wall. So you divide that by two, which would get you 75 PLF pounds per lineal foot of wall. And that's what you would use. And then you do the full mass takeoff for all of your ceiling and all of your roof and all of that. But that's kind of where, that's where it's coming from. So keep that in handy. So what that means, off my side tangent, WX for the roof is 105 kips. And for the ground is 23 kips. Next is WXHX raised to the K. And you're like, well, where's that coming from? Well, let's flip back over to our code. So we're still in section 12.8.3, vertical distribution of seismic forces. So the lateral seismic force, FX, kips or kilonewtons, induced at any level shall be determined from the following equations. So FX equals CVX times V. So that's your base shear V. And then CVX is basically the distribution, the vertical distribution factor as stated down here. And CVX is this big gnarly equation, but it's really not that scary. But that's where we come into effect of WX, you see here, WXHX raised to the K over the summation of all WXHX to the K of every story, of every level. That's why I'm tabulating it back in our calculations, because we're going to be doing this and... It's just a lot simpler if you tabulate it out. If you try to do it one by one, it starts to get a little confusing. Um, for common practice, it's really good to use like an Excel spreadsheet to keep everything nice and tight and clean. So, all right, let's jump back. All right, so WXHXK, that gets us, and we know K, again, is just 1.0, so it's just WX times HX, so 16 times 105. That gets you 1680, and then we know HX is zero, so... For ground, it's just zero. CVX is, again, the portion of this value divided by the summation of all levels of that value. So the summation, that's why we have our summation here. Um, WX, let's start back off here. Um, WX is 128 kips. 
summation of WXHX is just 1680 because 0 doesn't add anything to it. That means CVX is just equal to 1.0. Uh, at roof and then at ground, it's just 0, 0.0. FX, in turn, is equal to, like we said, CVX times V. Well, that's pretty straightforward. That means that um, the lateral forces, Fx, being applied at the roof are identical to your base shear. And our base shear, we know, is 12.6 uh, kips. Fx is V times Cvx. And we know that this is 0 kips. And what we can generate as well, what I like to throw in, is your overturning moment. And overturning moment, we know, so now this is our, you know, I've added Vx in there. Um, but in reality, we could pretty much just, just skip Vx. Um, or, you know, to keep it constant, let's just say, so Vx is just the same thing. So 12.6 kips, 0 kips. So Vx, instead of our question mark, equals Vx, which now we know is equal to the base shear, which is 12.6 kips. Well, our overturning moment for our structure, to make it do something like that, is force times perpendicular distance. So it's just Vx times Hn. So overturning moment is going to equal 201.6 kip feet. And this is just 0 kip feet. Cvx, again, because it's just one story, so your distribution factor is just 1.0. But if you had multiple stories, that would be like, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, you know, if it was a three-story structure. And then all of those together, I don't know why I wrote that, all those together, sum together should equal 1.0. For, so for this, 1.0 plus 0 is 1.0, so you're good. And then Fx is just 12.6 kips. So I just, I like to sum all those up. It gives you kind of a gut check of what's going on here. Because again, Fx, you can't ever have an Fx, a summation of Fx greater than your base shear. Your base shear is the maximum force that's being applied laterally to your structure. And then it's just being distributed across all of this, uh, the stories that you have. So you can never have more than the base shear. So you always want to sum that up and make sure you're good there. It's a nice check. Next, we need to find our rho, which is our redundancy factor, and this can be found back in the code in section 12.3.4.2. So let's jump back. So here we are, 12.3.4.2, redundancy factors for seismic design category D through F. Well, we know we're seismic design category D. Um, so for structures assigned to seismic category D and having extreme torsional irregularities as defined in table 12.3-1, um, we are assuming basically a, a non-torsionally irregular structure, so we can ignore that. Um, there, you can read up on that if you'd like, uh, but that's not what we have today. Type 1B, rho shall equal 1.3. All right, so we're not torsionally irregular, so it's not that. For other structures assigned to seismic design category D, which is us, and for structures assigned to seismic category E or F, rho shall equal 1.3, unless one of the following two conditions is met, whereby rho is permitted to be taken as 1.0. So the two conditions are here and here. So first condition, each story resisting more than 35% of the base shear in the direction of interest shall comply with table 12.3-3. Or B, structures are regular in plan at all levels, provided that the seismic force resisting system consists of at least two bays of seismic force resisting um, perimeter framing on each side of the structure in each orthogonal direction at each story resisting more than 35% of the base shear. The number of bays for a shear wall shall be calculated as the length of shear wall divided by the story height or two times the length of shear wall divided by the story height, HSX, for light frame construction. Well, that's us, and... I'm not going to lie, this video is getting super long, um, so I did already run through that. Basically, it's, it's based on your overall plan view of your structure and where your shear walls are, are located and stuff like that and how forces are distributing. I'm just going to tell you real quick that we do fall under that category, so our row is permitted to equal 1.0. But if you were ever, in a, you know, I don't suggest doing this, but if you're ever in a super crunch and you couldn't run through that, I mean, you can conservatively say that your row is 1.3. However, basically what that does is 
that increases your lateral demand that you're that you're designing for by 30%. So it's a big hit. So don't just don't just roll your eyes at this one. Um, you should read through this a little longer um, because it's pretty important. But for us today, Rho is 1.0. 1.0. Well, what does that mean to us? Well, we're going to go back again because what we're ultimately looking for is our E sub H and E sub V, which are effect of horizontal seismic forces and our effect of vertical seismic forces. V for vertical, H for horizontal. And these are the forces that you compare to your uh, wind forces to say, and then at the end of this you say, okay, which is creating worse base shear, which is creating worse overturning moment, and then you would choose um, whether the building is either wind controlled or seismic controlled. So here we are at last. So let's jump back into the code. So E sub H and uh, E sub V. So if we scroll down, we go to section 12.4.2.1. So we're here and we're here. We have our two equations, E H and E V. Um, e V is just as follows, 0 0.2 times SDS times D. D is effect of the dead load. So that's just your, um, basically, D is your big W, your effective seismic mass. And up here, QE is effects of horizontal seismic forces from V or FP. We know, so for us, that's, that's you know, VX. So let's jump back. So EH is equal to rho, you know, um, we, we could just say FX if we wanted to. So FX as we recall, boom, is here. So that is just times 1.0. So E sub H is equal to 12.6 kips. And then E sub V was 0 0.2 times SDS times W. That gets us 0 0.2, 0 0.64, 128 kips. That gets us 16.38 kips. And there you have it. So if you had your structure like we had, basically what's happening at this point, which is H sub N off the ground, you have your total base shear V. And then at this point, you have vertical effects from seismic going up and down. And those get broken down into load cases that we won't get into today. And then you also have lateral effects, which are EH, which are generating overturning moment, base shear, sliding, and bearing. And you compare those against like a wind designed, which we, we will be getting into, um, where you have, you know, I'm going to oversimplify it, but where you have lateral forces due to wind forces acting this way, creating overturning moment, base shear, sliding, um, bearing. So we get into all that fun stuff and comparing versus those two cases. But for today, we're finally at the end. That is how you find, um, you walk through the procedure of equivalent lateral forces, ELF procedure for seismic design category or for seismic design of a light framed wood structure with shear walls. I know that was kind of intensive, kind of uh, probably kind of a little boring. I mean, it's just walking through the code. But if you're new to this and you've never done seismic design before, um, I hope it was helpful. I hope um, I was able to clear things up a little bit for you. Like and subscribe. We actually big milestone. We are at 199 subs. Crazy. So one more of you. Tell that one friend that you've been dying to tell or get your dog on there and have them uh, sign up and subscribe, because that would make us hit 200. That's that's pretty big. Well, probably not pretty big for most people, but it's pretty big for me. And I think for the for this community, for the you know team Kestava, it, everyone's been chiming up a lot more in conversations and in, in asking questions and leaving comments. And it's been it's been really really fun. It's been a really fun part of my day. So let's keep it going. Let's keep growing. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.